This is a look on how a stock market moves. Prices of individual equities rising and falling throughout the trading day. Whenever the majority of them, or a representative group of them, called a stock market index, takes an especially large dive, a panicked cry often arises. The stock market's crashed! The stock market crashes are certainly scary. Hundreds of investments decline their value. Investors lose thousands of dollars. On paper, anyway. But what causes them? And what are the after effects? Market crashes and market corrections are often viewed as the same thing, but in reality, they're very different. And that difference is important to understand when planning your moves. Market corrections are periods of downward movement of 10% or greater that happen over a series of days, weeks, months, or even longer. Market crashes, on the other hand, are rapid, widespread declines in stock prices, marked by high volatility. While there is no official percentage decline that defines a crash, the declines are painful and dramatic, often 30% or more. Market crashes generally take place when signs of a bear market are on the horizon. There's a general feeling of overvaluation in equities, and economic conditions are questionable or in all-out financial crises. At those points, panic selling hits the market. And major indexes like the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average take dives. Stock market crashes often make a significant impact on the economy. Selling shares after a sudden drop in prices and buying too many stocks on margin prior to one are two of the most common ways investors can lose money when the market crashes. The impact of a crash can vary as well. Sometimes it's limited. For example, on October 19, 1987, after five years in a strong bull market, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, or DJIA, and S&P 500 both dropped over 20% following markets throughout Asia and across Europe. The crash was short, and markets quickly recovered. Within a few days, the DJIA regained more than 43% of the points it lost, and within nearly two years, the market had recovered almost 100%. At other times, the effects are widespread and longer lasting. The most notorious example is the crash of 1929. Stock prices dropped first on October 24th, briefly rallied, and then went into free fall on October 28th and 29th. Ultimately, the market lost 85% of its value. Though not the sole cause, this crash was one of the contributing factors of the Great Depression, the worst economic period in American history, lasting nearly 10 years. Historically, stock market crashes often occur after a long period of economic and or market growth. Confidence in the economy, steady stock gains, and low unemployment are all drivers of bull markets, as these sustained rallies are known. As more and more stocks are purchased, prices go up, both of individual equities and of the stock indexes themselves. But in the world of securities, prices can't keep rising indefinitely, and bull markets can only last for so long before something happens to turn the tide. Sometimes it's a general shift in sentiment, as in 1929, but usually some precipitating event occurs. Numerous things can cause a stock market to crash, including panic. This is one of the most common contributing factors to a crash. Stockholders who fear the value of their investments are in danger of dropping will sell their shares to protect their money. As prices begin to drop, the fear spreads, more sales ensue, and this can lead to a crash. Anything from a major player in the market having financial troubles to fears about the impact specific legislation may have can cause scores of investors to panic and sell off stock. Natural or man-made disasters. These can include all sorts of catastrophes, from floods to wars to pandemics. Case in point, the coronavirus-induced crash of March 2020. As the realization of the spread of COVID-19 began to take hold, the economic outlook for the U.S. and countries worldwide began to look grim. While countries announced travel limitations, mandatory business shutdowns, and quarantines, consumers stocked up on essential supplies, causing shortages. Companies began protecting profit margins through layoffs and furloughs, and investors started selling off stocks. Economic Crises 
A problem in industry or one section of the economy often has a ripple effect. One example is the subprime mortgage crisis, which unfolded over 2007-2008. Earlier in the decade, deregulation in the banking industry had led to an increase in mortgages to high-risk borrowers since the beginning of the decade. When these borrowers began defaulting on payments, home prices dropped and the housing market collapsed. Even worse, many of the now worthless mortgages had been packaged and sold off to institutional investors, who in turn lost billions on them. Big firms began to fold, and the stock market reacted sharply. From September 19th to October 10th, the Dow Jones Industrial Index declined 3,600 points. Speculation When you have people and companies investing in a sector in the hopes that an asset or security will grow, or based on future performance expectations, you have speculation that often creates a bubble. If the performance disappoints, and the hype doesn't live up to the reality, the bubble bursts and a mass sell-off occurs. But can a stock market crash be prevented? There really is no way to prevent the stock market from crashing. However, governments have added safeguards to prevent severe drops and upsets in market stability. One such tactic is the circuit breaker, instituted after the 1987 crash. If the S&P 500 index experiences a drop of 7% or more over the previous day, trading in all U.S. stock markets is halted. Depending on the severity of the drop, trading could be suspended for either a 15-minute period or the rest of the day. The purpose of this measure is to give analysts and investors time to gather enough accurate information before making trade decisions. Large amounts of stocks might also be purchased by private investors to try and stabilize a market. In fact, that used to be quite effective a century ago, shortening the panics of 1873 and 1907. The government itself can step in, lowering interest rates to encourage investors to borrow and buy. But even with these mitigating factors, crashes still happen. The natural cycle of markets is to rise and fall. While crashes in the stock market can result in crippling losses, economies inevitably bounce back. This makes a strong case for taking a long view approach to investing. That means creating a strong portfolio that will hold up to dives in market values and provide a healthy mix of securities that will grow when times are good and see you through when times are lean. Though the thought of a market crash may be scary, recovery will eventually come. So I, volatility will occur and markets will continue to have these ups and downs. I think that's a great opportunity if people can understand what they own. If they don't understand what they own, they can own mutual funds, try and figure out mutual funds they own and keep adding to it.